Es tut mir leid, dass ich heute nicht auf Deutsch äh, reden werde, aber ich glaube tatsächlich, es ist besser für euch. My German is still dreadful, so I will just present uh, in English. So the, um, the tool I would like to present today mm -hmm. is called the GeoBrowser. Um, and it's one of the services provided by the RIA. So I will just say a few words about the RIA as a project. Uh, the German Archaeological Institute is participating to the RIA. And the RIA means a Digital Infrastructure for Research in the Arts and Humanities. Um, you can find this leaflet on the table over there. Please pick one. And there is a brief explanation of what Daria does and is. But basically, it's trying to build an infrastructure for research, providing some services and tools, and organizing conferences and uh, workshops about doing research with digital tools uh, in the arts and humanities. And the GeoBrowser is one of these tools offered by um, the Daria infrastructure. So the, uh, the main goal of the GeoBrowser is to present spatial data in a temporal context. Um, that's why it's called E4D, um, the tool from which the GeoBrowser, the GeoBrowser springs. Um, it's a reuse of the Europeana 4D tool um, and is useful for researchers in order to determine relationships um, within data uh, on a temporal and geographical level. It's useful to visualize data, but it's also useful to explore them. So I will just, uh, in these slides, uh, show quickly what are the features of the GeoBrowser, and in the next slides um, show an example of how the GeoBrowser can be used actually to explore data about the limits. Um, so the input format for the GeoBrowser is KML, but can also be KMZ, which is the, uh, the zipped version of KML, or also takes as input uh, CSV. The only requirement is that your data are online somewhere, and you can point to them using a URL. Um, the GeoBrowser is suitable to display data that have both time and space attached to them. If you only have data with either space or time, then it's not really the tool you need to visualize and explore your data. Um, there are different features to um, explore the data from a, uh, the geographical perspective. For instance, tool to select regions like radius, circle, or polygons and then zoom into your data and then dig more into, into the analysis and then zoom out and, and, and keep going. Um, you can do the same with, uh, with the time. So you can select a time span, for instance, of let's say 50 years and then um, run this time span through your data and see how your data change over time. And you can do this also by means of nice animations. Um, to, to visualize them in a more helpful way. Then you can select different, um, uh, different maps um, to provide a better context for your data. So if you're looking at um, ancient data, you might want an ancient, um, an ancient layer underneath. Um, and one feature that will be that we are testing right now is to display overlay maps. So you, you'll be able to, to uh, show a scanned map and on top, of the, on, on top of this to plot your um, geo and temporal data. Um, another interesting feature is to compare multiple data sets at the same time. So you can load multiple data sets as, as here is shown and then see the differences and, or see the patterns um, with respect to time and space. Um, and then as I said, um, select uh, time spans or zoom into the map to, to better understand your data. Um, this is the, um, the, the, the features of the GeoBrowser um, in a glance. In Daria, uh, then we try to, uh, with the data provided by the Daria partners, to display them and to see how they can be used with a GeoBrowser. So there was, for example, the, the Totenbuch project that has been mentioned already by Elton in relation to Pelagios, and they imported, exported to KML and then imported into the GeoBrowser data. Uh, the same did um, 
GSCI in essence with uh, their database of Jewish, uh, Jewish inscriptions. And then we also have an example from the DAE uh, showing fine spots of metals um, from China. But for today, I actually wanted to share that to show something more related to the limes, uh, to, to show you how the GeoBrowser can be used. So I just switched to the mm, other slides quickly. Um, so the, the, the GeoBrowser is one tool, but with different, and I would say also many branches. So started in Leipzig with the Europeana 4D, um, then the GeoBrowser in Daria is extending and, uh, and building upon the Europeana 4D uh, tool. But then there is also the branch, uh, which is now called GeoTimco, uh, still developed by Stefan Jenike in Leipzig, and now also by Sebastian Kruse at the Max Planck Institute um, for uh, Wissenschaftsgeschichte. Um, and it's, a, it's an open source tool with a code on, on GitHub, and, they, and these two are actually two branches of the same tool. So it's been developed by an, a more than one partner. Um, as I said, it's a tool for exploratory research when you have data, having time and space, and you want to explore them. Um, so KML allows for exporting data from your data sources into the geo browser, but then I want also to argue that the preparation of data is also part of the research process. So you need to have research questions to ask to your data, and then you can do something useful with, with this tool. Um, the data we have, uh, and um, Sebastian and Philip already talked about it, are mainly places related to the Limes that are in the DIE Gazetteer, um, and then publications about places in the Limes that are in Zenon. With this data in mind, what you can do is to ask some, uh, some research questions. And my research questions have been up to now, up to yesterday, only a vague idea of what uh, the Limes was. I mean, I started it, but I, I had no idea, for instance, what was the most studied place um, in the Limes. Uh, so I just started asking some questions. For instance, which publications are related to each place? Or what are the most or the least studied places in the Limes? Or how the studies about the Limes evolved over time? And then there are some, some dots. You can just fill in your research questions and then process the data uh, to answer them, hopefully. But in order to, to do some mashups with data, what you need to have is a, is a uh, technical infrastructure that allows for this meshing up. Um, so what I was able to do was to get the places uh, related to the limits from the Gazetteer because they are filtered by tag. And then for each place, I went to Zenon, which is the library catalog of the DI, getting all the publications related to each place in the Limes. And then I kept only those uh, places having at least one publication. And then the, my space and time dimensions were, for the space was the, time, the, the place in the Limes, and for the time was the publication date of the publication. Um, and this was relatively easy with uh, a script of uh, 20 to 50 lines of Python, I was able to query the data using the RESTful API, uh, the RESTful APIs and using JSON just to get the data. Um, dealing with the data in the Gazetteer and uh, the um, Zeno was relatively easy because the data are very well connected to each other in these two data sources. So extending this, getting data from other sources might be slightly more complicated, but for instance, all the places in the Gazetteer have links to, to Pleiades, so it would also be possible to get the data from Pelagios and to um, increase the data set. And um, in these slides, there are actually also the links to the script that, that I wrote and to the output of, um, of the script if you want to try out yourself. So just uh, quickly to come to the results, what I was able to show was the, um, the publications, the, the, the bigger dots are the places in the Limes with, um, with more publications. Um, and then you see in the timeline underneath the map, you can see how uh, the number of publications uh, increased or decreased. Um, another, two, another interesting feature of the Geo Browser is that you can just um, create a permanent link uh, not only to the tool, but to what you're actually viewing in the tool. So when you load your data, 
and you are at a certain step of your exploratory process, you can just create a link, send it to another, to a colleague saying, ah, this is what I found out, check it out. So with this, um, so this actually loads my data into the, into the Geo browser and, and displays them and it's um, actually live and it works. So what you can see uh, are all the places in the limes, uh, the timeline underneath and then um, in this sort of tabular view, you have the links to back to Zenon um, and to the Gazetteer. Um, then what you can do is to select one place. Um, we can take, for instance, Salzburg, um, zoom into it, and then using uh, this view, you can filter out only the results by the place. So going back to the slides, um, yeah, this I showed it already. Uh, this is another uh, screenshot from the, uh, from the MPI branch of the Geo browser. Um, so it's the next, yeah, the, 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 what will be the next um, Geo browser. Uh, we loaded uh, as an overlay um, a KML file with Limes and then plotted upon it the same data with links to the bibliography. Um, an interesting answer to my initial research questions was, for instance, I was looking at how uh, publications about the Limes increase or decrease over time, and the choosing the time unit decade from this view uh, appears quite neatly um, in, in this kind of serendipitous way uh, that in the 1980s there were 12 publications about um, the Limes as a whole, and then in the 1990s, there was a, a, a spike of studies about the limits. Um, so this was just, just an example of uh, how you can use this tool to get into your data, ask, quest, ask questions, and get some, um, some answers back. I think this is it. Thank you very much, Matteo. Um, I should say, that for this block of three um, little presentations. Uh, Philip Gerd um, is a prehistorian that studied in Kiel uh, prehistory and geophysics. And he works since 2011 at the University of Cologne. And Sebastian Kui is uh, studying what one could say in English, humanities computing person that doesn't have too much uh, study um, experience in classics or in archaeology, only by working for me for a very, very long time, much longer than 2011. Um, and Matteo is uh, coming, or we got him out of King's College, London, um, and he's studying there uh, digital humanities, all three naturally probably uh, don't dwell on research questions about the lemurs. They were dwelling on how to represent information available in certain sources which may be comprehensive or not. And I think everybody does that.